Hello and welcome to the latest advanced logic brick tutorial. Um, in today's tutorial we're going to be looking at artificial intelligence um, and mainly the basics of advanced AI. So a lot of users will be familiar with using logic bricks in order to move around a scene um, and create sort of soldiers if you like that can attack you. But a lot of them don't really take advantage of the state system which is what we have inside Blender. And considering that most artificial intelligence is based off some form of finite state machine, this would make a lot of sense to use. So we're going to jump straight in. We're going to create a cube in a plane. The plane is the floor and the cube is the player, or the AI. Now, for the sake of this tutorial, we'll just quickly add some states. So go and make sure we can see our visible states. And this first state is the idle state. So in the idle state, um, the player can do very little. Um, I'm not sure what would be the best way to describe it, describing this, perhaps. Um, hmm, perhaps we'll make an animation. So go to the action editor, or dope sheet, and then action editor. And we'll insert a keyframe. We'll go. about 20 frames in and then we have this we'll call this idle and we'll give it we'll save it as a false user so it doesn't get deleted. Now we'll go to our actuator action idle and set it to play. Now what we're gonna do is gonna give it a radar sensor Could have been the positive y axis, angle of about 45 degrees, distance of about 10 blender units. And this is going to be the transition. This will cause a transition. So we'll set this to ping pong or flipper. Ping pong is probably best. Let's have a look. Right, that's our idle. And then transition will look for an enemy property and it will set the state. If you want to add transitions, you can either add a new state for transitions or you can set a property. But I'd use a new state to be honest. Set state to alert state. So this is what happens when it detects an enemy, we go to the alert state. Change, set state actually um, disables all the logic, I believe, on this current state. I'll just double check that, of course. Yes, yeah, so set state deactivates the other states, which is what we want. Now what we can do is go to our next state. Set the first one as the visible one, as the initial one. And this will be our hostile state. And we'll give it a steering actuator. We're going to add another player. So if this we can add a player object we can control. So I'll make a monkey. We're going to track towards the, the monkey. And we'll just use seek for now. And we'll set that to an always. Let's just see what happens. I'm going to add some movement logic. Key for forwards. Motion. Yeah, I'll pause so you can I'll add this all now. And now we'll give him a property player. And just see what happens. I don't know if I'll expecting much. So let's just quickly check that the physics type is correct. If we give it a an actor, just make sure that's checked. And then we'll show the physics visualization so we can see what's going on. Um, I'll just change the Suzanne to the nicer collision mesh with the box. And it's interesting that, that isn't being activated. So 
So we'll check why that is. The initial state is set to state one. We'll show the states just to make sure we can see what's going on. So it's not detecting the enemy. It's because I've I called it look for property enemy, not player. So if I set that to enemy. Now, hopefully, you'll see that something changes. So what we can do is we can invade the AI's path, and suddenly the AI starts to follow us. How do we fix this? Well, now we need to have it so when the AI cannot see the object, it goes back to its patrol state. Or rather, let's give it a patrol state. So now, oh, and so now I'll give it a transition again, like a radar sensor. Where's radar? There. Looking for the property enemy on the positive Y. And this time. It has to be 45 degrees, 10 distance, and we'll call it transition. Now let's go back to this state and quickly rename it. So, one's idle. But then we've got this one here, it will be. Bother, I've made a mistake. Hold on. Distance of 20, positive y, and this should be on state, only state 0, but it's not connected to anything. So set state 2 visible, and then this other transition brick, if it's not positive, which I'll add here. In fact, we'll move this to state 2. Yeah. So now, if this radar or transition isn't positive, you see this should only belong to the brick. So I'm not sure why this brick is showing. It's because it's pinned. That's a feature I wasn't aware of. So now, if we, um, when the player cannot, when the sorry, when the AI cannot see the object, we can then set it to transition again, and this time we'll set it to state three, which is a patrol state. Patrol state is when it's aware of the enemy, but only just. It's not the same as a uh, normal attack, but it's not idle either. So now what we do is we give ourselves a radar sensor plus wire axis. And this might be best actually to we could do this as an alert. But we'll do that in another tutorial in the next tutorial. In distance of twenty. Make it a slightly longer distance now. No, we'll set it to 20 and then we'll also give it a, a, a property sensor and the game property set to timer this will be a timer and it's called delay we also give ourselves an always sensor and then a property actuator the property actuator will assign the value of delay to zero so that when it loads this state that's set to zero now when we if we detect the enemy, we want to change state to state 2. Otherwise, we give ourselves the state actuator 
and set itself back to state 1, which is idle. So in other words, if we see an enemy, we, uh, we attack it and switch to the attack state. Otherwise, we stay on idle. Or rather, we, we wait a length of time before going to idle. So, enemy. I'll pause this and rename this bricks. So, what we've done now? Well, I've um, I had had to change the um, one of the logic bricks. It was the track to seek actuator, rather. Change it to the y axis. In addition, I had to set the radar on state two to use true pulse triggering. So, what happens if we simulate this? Well, you'll see that the cube can drive around, and as soon as it escapes the radar, it waits one second before going into idle. So if you look at the top left, there's a debug state. It's in state 2, meaning it's detected me. Now if I escape quickly by hiding behind a wall, which would normally be the case, it starts to spin around and then goes into idle. Now in this case, the idle state uses an animation which is why it splins, but that's the general concept. So that's for today's tutorial. In, in the next tutorial, we're going to start looking at how to remove the need for multiple radar sensors and just use a uh, either a global script or in this case we could use messages. Perhaps, it's not definite. But thank you for watching.